Are you stuck in a creative rut? Let me share my foolproof formula for breaking free and making art, any art whatsoever. It might be good, it might be bad, but you'll still be creating and that's what matters, isn't it? First of all, don't wait. Even if my ideas aren't perfect, I make it a point to start creating right away, regardless of whether it turns out to be a piece of crap or not. If I feel stuck, the first thing I do is clean up my workspace. Often this feeling of being stuck is a sign that I'm overwhelmed. I look around and toss out any clutter and grab my spray to wipe away the dust and negative energy. This process gives me a clean slate and helps me think more clearly. I also keep dried lavender and calming aromas nearby to soothe my mind. They always leave me in a happier, more grounded mood. After all, it's really frustrating not being able to draw when I love it so much. These little rituals help me relax and refocus. Sometimes I might like to candle or take a shower to fully reset. I like to clean up between all of my projects because it helps unclutter my mind, making room for new ideas. And then next, I'd make something ugly if the other thing didn't work. Like I said, the best thing is to jump straight back in. I start sketching whatever comes to mind, even if it turns out ugly. Sometimes it's just a page of doodles, but that's okay. I remember doodling in the back of my notebook in school, especially when the lessons were boring. Once, in a science lesson, I was doodling right in the front row, practically asking to be caught. The teacher looked at me and said, that's nice, Stacy, but don't do it now. I went red as a beetroot. <laughs> it wasn't a big deal, just a little embarrassing because he called me out. Ah, those were the days. <laughs> <clears throat> of horribleness. So think back to that carefree time, embrace imperfection and just create. Finish what you start, even if it's not ideal, and enjoy making art for yourself with no expectations. Sometimes it takes a mental dump on paper to find inspiration. Huh? If your brain isn't cooperating, try to use a generator that merges characters or generates character traits and backstories. I used one and came up with this. Mark Smith is a 25 year old health centre receptionist with brown hair, blue eyes and light skin. He's obsessed with solving the unsolved murder of his friend Lyra from 10 years ago while living with his partner Rafa. Raf? I don't know how you pronounce that. He enjoys working on cars and investigating clues but has a phobia of worms. Of course, because that's what everyone has a phobia of. And an obsession with cats, I get that one, and a fixation on Lyra's case. Feel free to use this or make your own. I mean, have you ever been so stuck that you wanted to scream? What helps you? And then I suppose if those other two things didn't help, I'd move on to sketching from life. On days when I just don't feel like myself, I know I need to shake things up, so instead of racking my brain for new ideas, I start sketching what I see around me. Sometimes I browse Pinterest for reference photos, or I'll gather loose leaves and treasures from the garden to study and sketch. I love drawing people, though it can feel a bit intimidating to sketch in public. Once, while drawing with my sister, a lovely woman approached us and encouraged us to keep going. She said, it's a valuable skill to have, which was sweet, but with my social anxiety, I usually try to avoid crowded places. Still, sketching scenes where characters interact is super helpful. To get around my public drawing jitters, I sometimes take discreet reference photos while I'm out. Just make sure to keep those photos to yourself. Not everyone loves being secretly sketched. For a college project, I walked through the town centre, took secret photos of people, items and stalls for inspiration, and then sketched more illustrative versions of them. It really helped me to come up with new ideas. You could start by sketching your hand in different poses. It's expressive and everyone has two of them. Well, most people do unless you've been attacked by a shark or something. <laughs> And next on my long list of things to do, if you can't even, is to find inspiration and take breaks. So what I do is visit art shops, browse through books, or explore online galleries for inspiration. If you're on a budget, just dash past the art supplies section. <laughs> when I need a break, I just do non-art activities like walking, talking with my friend. Yes, friend, one, singular. Reading or watching movies to refresh my mind. Sure, some of those thoughts might be intrusive or playing gobbledygook but I used to share them with my childhood dog. I'm sure he's gone mental from it. If not that, probably his old age but who's to say? If that doesn't work, I remind myself that sometimes all I need is a break. Maybe a week, maybe two, doesn't matter. Sometimes your brain just needs rest and recovery. I guess next what you can do is if any of you actually have friends, which I actually doubt, just... Damn! 
just kidding. Is to collaborate with them. So like, if you're stuck, why not help your friends with their creative projects? I often find that drawing with my sister, who is just as much of a creative weirdo as I am, does wonders. Sometimes we don't even need to be actively drawing, just sitting together does the trick. You probably have a creative friend with whom random funny ideas just come up, and you look at each other and think, wait, we could just draw that. The power. <laughs> To sum it up, don't wait, just jump in. Even if your idea feels like a disaster waiting to happen, clear your space, light that lavender candle or whatever it might be, and embrace imperfection. Making something ugly is like a creative detox. Just puke your brain out on that page. That embarrassing doodle could become your next masterpiece. Sketching from life sparks fresh ideas. And even if public drawing feels awkward, start simple, like with your hand. Okay, that sounded like a <laughs> vision jerk at and I cannot unhear it. <laughs> Taking breaks is crucial too. Sometimes stepping outside is all you need to ignite new thoughts. Finally, collaborating with creative friends can work wonders, even if it's just bouncing ideas around. Whether you're making ugly art, finding inspiration, or taking a break, it's all part of the process. If you enjoyed this, head over to stacyilu.com for stickers, bookmarks, and delightful oddities. You can even order a one-of-a-kind portrait. And don't miss my children's book, Super Poppy, featuring a guinea pig on a baked bean adventure. Because why not? If this made you smile, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and smash that subscribe button for more wonderfully weird tales. Before you go, I'd love to hear about your own struggles with art block. What unconventional methods do you use to spark inspiration? Do you have a favourite spot or ritual that helps you get those creative juices flowing? Maybe we can swap tips and tricks. And if you're still feeling stuck, try a creative challenge every day for a week. Tag me and I'll be cheering you on and secretly judging you just a tiny bit if you you stop. Someone's got to keep you accountable, right? See you!